Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today, I am going to be filming a video on fragrances that I grew to love. I recently had a subscriber request this, so that's what we're doing. The majority of the time, I pretty, I pretty much know right away if I'm going to want to bring a scent into my collection, if I want to buy the full bottle. But every once in a while, there will be a scent that I need more time with. Every once in a while, there will be a scent that I hate <laughs> at first. And then like a year plus down the road, I revisit it and now it's one of my favorites in my collection. Let's get into it. I'll walk you through kind of my process with each of the scents, how I felt about them initially and now the relationship we have now. The first fragrance is Kaoli's Utopia Vanilla Cocoa 21. Now, I have always been extremely sensitive to the scent profile of fragrances that lean suntan lotion. It's not my vibe, it's not my journey, it never has been. And when I first smelled this, I just kind of wrote it off as a fragrance that is grouped in that category. And it's also a very thick, creamy scent. And this scent screams summer, like how it smells, it smells like summer, it smells like sunshine, but it is very sweet, thick and creamy. I live in California and it gets hot here. And on very hot days, I'm not wanting to reach for a scent that is thick, creamy and sweet. Like I want something refreshing. So yes, those were my initial thoughts. Much later down the road, I purchased a fragrance and a sample of this was included. I'm like, what the heck, let's revisit it. And I'm like, I didn't even want to admit to myself because I wore it that night. Like I was, I got out of the shower, I was ready to go to bed or winding down or watching Netflix. And I wore this and it put me in such a great mood. I felt so happy and cozy and just like, it smells fun and youthful and it was a delight, it was a delight. And then I found myself craving it the next day and I wanted to wear it again and I'm like, I can't believe this is happening to me. And to this day, this is the only fragrance that I've ever loved that can be grouped into that kind of suntan lotion category. But for me now, this is not too much so that. It absolutely has that element. It puts you in that headspace. It has that vibe. It has that mood, but it's not screaming sunblock like other fragrances that um, it might be compared to like in the same family. And this to me smells so luxurious, smooth, well blended, fits any age. Like literally this is going to be so perfect for young, young girls as well as more mature ladies. It's gonna smell fabulous. It smells like you are on vacation. Spring break, vacation, palm desert, drink in a mixed drink, you know, we got a cocktail moment going on, like a coconut colada. We have our big, you know, sunglasses on, a big floppy hat, we're tanning. Um, it's a mood, it's a vibe, it's an experience, but I will still not reach for this on very hot days. So I'm pulling for this when it's sunny out, you know, spring and summer, but you can best believe that this is not a scent that I gravitate towards when it is in the 90s plus, because it's just too much for that, for me personally. This has a beautiful, thick, creamy, vanilla sweetened coconut note, and that comes off like cream of coconut, but also coconut milk. The white florals are so well blended in here and that really elevates the scent. Very feminine and put together. One of my most disliked notes is gardenia, but the gardenia that's in here is not mature whatsoever. So they did an excellent job. And then it of course has tuberose and jasmine, the sandalwood is very creamy and likable. It's musky and has the perfect amount of sweetness. It doesn't smell overly sugared, but it's just 
a delightful experience and one of my favorite Kaolis. The next fragrance is Fragrance Du Bois Oud June Intense. And from the moment that I smelled this perfume, I knew right away, I'm like, that is incredible. I've truly never smelled anything like this. It smells so luxurious, refined, classy, like it smells rich. It's absolutely beautiful. But I am quite sensitive to the Tiari flower in fragrances. I think Tiari flower smells lovely. It smells beautiful. It just often won't feel like a note that feels like me for whatever reason. And I initially had the same problem with this one as I did with Vanilla Coco 21, where it's a scent that definitely embodies spring and summer, but it's a very thick, creamy scent. Like we got some thick, creamy florals. And again, it was something that was too much for me in high heat, but I've always loved the scent. And I've gone through decant after decant after decant, like big decants, trying to get to the point where I'm like, yes, I want a full bottle because I did definitely resonate with the scent, but it does have a density to it. But like I said, after many times wearing this perfume, I finally was really wanting a bottle. And again, it's never gonna be something that I reach for in super hot weather because I wanna feel refreshed. But in the 70s, amazing. And the way that this meshes with your body with your skin. It smells like you are putting on the most refined, expensive, luxurious, tiari flower, fruity, ylang ylang body oil. Just like slathering yourself, okay? With sun-kissed, tan skin. Oh my word. It smells like you are going to Bali. And you know, we have fruity notes in here. We have a pineapple note listed. But to me, personally, I cannot detect any specific fruity note at all. It is so well blended. It smells warm, creamy. We have a tiny hint of vanilla just to give it like a natural light amount of sweetness. It doesn't smell edible at all. Very pretty. Like it, it smells like a spa oil in Bali or something like that. It's fantastic. Next up is Juliet Has a Gun Magnolia Bliss. Now, initially, I felt a bit underwhelmed by this fragrance because, as you might know, I love my complex, more unique scents generally. Like, I definitely have my easy reaches and simpler scents that just make me happy. But overall, I would say those are the scents I gravitate towards. And I've always thought this was a very pretty scent, but yeah, I was just... I was wanting more from it initially. And as I was trying to make up my mind about this, I kept wearing it, you know what I mean? That's what you gotta do. And I kid you not, when I say every single time that I wore this fragrance, I would receive multiple compliments a day. Both men and women just telling me how pretty I smell. This is a very, crowd pleasing, just lovely scent. And the more and more that I wore it, I really grew an appreciation for Magnolia Bliss. This, I would group in the same scent category as my Chloe Nomad Absolute. It gives me that kind of vibe where it's a perfumey perfume, but a much more fresh modern take with some like added zest from citrus. We have a crisp nectarine note and then added zest, a little bit of spice from ginger. Crisp and refreshing. This is delightful on a hot day and it smells very classy. Any woman, any age can wear this. It's clean musky. We have some very fresh dew covered white florals. So now, for a scent that I just want as like an easy grab and go perfume. I don't know what I'm in the mood for. Um, and this is gonna suit any occasion. It just smells lovely. I know, reach for this. And I have like a pretty good dent, I would say. Pretty good dent. This next one, 
I don't know what was wrong with me. I had to seek psychiatric help. I did not like <laughs> Pyreto's bald a freak at first. Like, what the freak? I have so many friends in the fragrance community that love bald a freak, that are ride or die for this fragrance. And I wanted so badly to understand what they were getting. I smelled this for the first time and I'm like, and what? Like, it's a citrus perfume. What do you mean? What do you mean when you say that this is so unique and so chic and I, I could not relate <laughs> to anything that anyone was saying because to me it just smelled like a basic, <laughs> Oh my gosh, like truly appalling to say that out loud. A, a basic citrus perfume. Now, oh my word, now this is one of my favorite perfumes in my entire collection. I am ride or die for Bald of Freak. It is one of my top 10 must have lifer fragrances. Anyway, so I kept my sample because I'm like, I am determined to fall in love with this, okay? I'm determined <laughs> to figure out what it is that people are talking about here. It took me a long ass time. It took me a long time to get on board with this. I kept revisiting it, but every time that I did, I picked up on that unique factor a little bit more. And I picked up on this unique, natural underlying sweetness in the scent a little bit more until finally, after many, many times of revisiting this scent, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the most <laughs> stunning, unique, best citrus perfume I have ever smelled in my entire life, and it still holds that title. I've had to issue a public apology since <laughs> having that opinion. This smells so unbelievably crisp, and chic, one of the best, if not the best vetiver scent I've ever smelled. It smells woody, clean, fresh, musky, and just incredibly well blended florals that have kind of fruity, addictive sweetness to the perfume. And that part of the fragrance just blows my mind, frankly. Like I could wear this every damn day and be very happy. Well, in the spring and summer at least. This makes me feel a certain way. It truly is the chic clean girl aesthetic bottled. Fan flippantastic on both men and women. And this actually lasts pretty much all day on my skin. I'm not gonna lie. It does on my skin. Do you overspray? Do you moisturize? That's what I do. It does the damn thing. This one is the fragrance where I had the biggest turnaround, 180 with, okay, like night and day reactions <laughs> to and feelings. And that is again, like one of my most beloved fragrances in my entire collection is Diptyque's Eau Dwell. When I first tried this, it was very early on into my fragrance journey, if you will. And this was just too damn green for me. It was too green. It was way too aromatic for me. And I was like, people want to smell like this? People want to smell green? I did not understand the hype for the life of me. So yeah, I absolutely do not recommend this for <laughs> fragrance beginners or if you're someone that knows you don't enjoy a green or aromatic quality. But now. Now, Juniper Vanillas, in particular, are one of my most beloved scent profiles of all time. I find them so delightful when you have this natural, smooth vanilla that's not too sweet, it doesn't smell gourmand, mixed with that incredibly fresh, crisp, outdoorsy smell of juniper trees. I love the smell of the woods. I find it so peaceful, centering, lovely. Um, and that's this. Yes, indeed. And this scent to me smells like a freaking nature fairy, a woodland fairy, a tinker fairy, if you will. It smells like this 
magical vanillic sap is secreting from these juniper trees. Like this is what the resin smells like that's oozing out of the trees. And it smells so damn good. It's chic, it's cool, totally unisex. This is also actually, in fact, one of my most complimented perfumes. It's resinous, it has fresh spiciness, it also has like a black tea note. It's just so grounding and earthy, but in the most delightful, chic way. And it smells clean to me, like this does not smell like dirt, but you do need to be down with like an earthy vibe. Ah, one with nature, let me tell you. This one, Miklef's Elangen Gold. When I first smelled this, I kid you not, embarrassing. I thought this smelled like, like vanilla cookies or something like that. What? Anna, get it together. Truly, what is wrong with you? I thought it smelled good. I've always thought it smelled good. It was, again, one of those perfumes that I tested in like the very, very beginning of getting into fragrances. Um, I revisited it much later and I was like, this smells like the heavens. It smells like an actual glistening ray of sunshine beaming down from the heavens. You know that visual when you look up in the sky and it's like the most breathtakingly beautiful blue sky day. And then you have these fluffy clouds, the sun is out and it's peeking through the clouds and it's illuminating the cloud. Like it looks like it's glowing. And then you just have this beam, this shot of sunlight that's radiating down. That's what this smells like. It smells like the heavens. It smells like God's angels. And the fact that I did not get that <laughs> upon first experience is truly a sin. I've had to repent for my transgressions. This is the most beautifully feminine, well-blended, stunning blend of Ylang Ylang coconut vanilla and sandalwood. This is the best interpretation of Ylang Ylang that I've ever smelled in my life. It smells so happy, uplifting. It has a true sunshine quality. And then it also has a bit of a creamy banana facet, a little bit. So it's giving you that tropical feel a little bit. That's of course supported by the coconut as well. And the coconut smells so natural. It's not suntan coconut. It's not artificial. It's not too sweet. It is like the perfect balance of this light feminine amount of sweetness. Same thing with the vanilla. This is like bordering the line of gourmand. It's not straight up edible. It's not a straight up gourmand, but it's bordering that line. And then the sandalwood is just so delightful, creamy, and happy if you're not into woody notes. Uh, this is not that's this is not something that you're going to have to be wary of with this perfume. Another one that I grew to love was BDK Gris Charnel. And this is to date the only fig fragrance that has a fig note in it that I love. I really don't enjoy the note of fig. I think it smells, I think it smells good. The scent is good, but there is no way that I want to be smelling that continuously. I do not want, I do not want to smell like fig. For some reason it annoys the hell out of me. And when I first tried this, obviously on Demi Rawlings' recommendation, of course, I was really blown away by it. I was like, this is a masterpiece. This is incredible. It smells so unique, edgy, stunning, but I couldn't get on board with that fig note. So it wasn't for me. But the amount of people, the amount of times that I've gotten comments or DMs like, Anna, have you tried Grease Charnel? And I'm like, Yes, of course, but the fig, and they're like, but Anna, you're a sandalwood girl. You're a woody fragrance girl. You you and Gris Charnel are pairing, okay? You might not believe it yet, but I believe it. And you were right, so I have you to thank. And it also has cardamom in there, obviously. Another one of my favorite notes. Um, so yes, I revisited it, and the fig, Praise me, no longer bothers me. To be completely honest with you, the fig isn't that loud to my nose anymore. Like it just, it doesn't register in the same way that it used to. I still get it, but for, I don't know, I don't know. For some reason, it does not bother me in the slightest. And it's one of my favorite perfumes. It smells so 
Parisian chic put together a phenomenal like staple of a unisex fragrance. This is a dry blast of sandalwood, which of course we, we know I love. It's powdery from the iris and then it has a light natural sweetness from the fig and the tonka bean. To me, this is mainly a black tea, cardamom and sandalwood bomb. It's a very dry fragrance overall. It's a very chic, earthy, grounded scent and this can be worn year round. It's gonna work for like any occasion. The only thing I wouldn't recommend this for is for girls who are more into their girly feminine fragrances, then I don't think this is gonna be for you. But if you're down with an edgy, cool vibe, here you go. The other one that grew on me is also from BDK, and this is Rouge Smoking. And from the start, I thought this was so fun because immediately I thought of like cherry, Dr. Pepper, cherry Pepsi with like vanilla powdered sugar donuts. It just smelled so fun and I had never smelled anything like this at the time. It just smelled fun. It smelled fun. But at the time I was like, do I wanna smell like that? Do I wanna smell like cherry soda and powdered sugar donuts? The answer is yes. <laughs> The answer is yes. It's a very unique gourmand in my opinion, but it's so likable. It's extremely fluffy and cozy. It smells like it's time to cuddle and we're just gonna sit up on the couch and eat some sweets. It's very comforting. Like for a rainy day or a day in, we're bundling up, it's a vibe. So yeah, we get a lot of that powderiness from the heliotrope. We have, of course, the cherry, the vanilla, and then a prominent base of tonka bean, cashmere wood, and very comforting. I really enjoy rouge smoking. Next up, my favorite from this house, like absolutely my favorite, Wilhelm Perfumeries Poets of Berlin. Absolutely stunning. I have talked about this fragrance so often and it is by far one of the most unique fruity scents in my collection. A lot of people describe this to be a unique vanilla, which yes it is unique and yes there is vanilla in it, but to my nose it doesn't read like a vanilla perfume. Can I pick up on it? Yes, but it doesn't scream vanilla to me and vanilla isn't the most prominent thing I get or even the second most prominent thing. I get blueberry number one, which is such a unique fruity note and has become one of my favorite notes in perfumery actually. It is so incredibly addictive and it's a note that I hope gets utilized more because I want more. I want more blueberry perfumes. And then secondary, I get that bamboo, another very unique green note. And for that reason, this perfume is not for everyone. I enjoyed this from the moment I smelled it. This was like intrigue at first sniff. I was like, whoa, 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 what do we have on our hands here? So it took me a couple wears and then I was head over heels in love with it. When I wear this and I ask people, what do you smell from this? They'll tell me it smells fruity. And then they will also tell me that they get this like green spa-like vibe from it. And they will often guess that there's a eucalyptus note in here, which I understand because you know, spa, eucalyptus, bamboo, it kind of like ties together. And then we have this earthy orris root note that adds a little bit of creaminess also adds to the unique factor. There's, this is definitely not a blind buy kind of perfume. You have to sample this first. It's grounded with sandalwood and then vanilla. A non-gourmand, not sugary kind of vanilla to round everything out. This makes me feel a lot of things. I feel edgy when I wear this. I feel cool. And then it's fruity and very uplifting. So I love to wear this on warm days. That fruity note really comes to life. And it's actually quite the compliment getter for me as well. And then it also smells grounding and calming and a little bit fresh and spa-like, like from the bamboo. So it's really an experience and I just absolutely adore 
Poets of Berlin. And the last fragrance that I grew to love is Maison Crovelli Iris Malikan. And this is one of my most special, adored perfumes in my collection. I think it is seriously so cool. And this is also another one that you cannot blind buy. This is going to be an absolute love or an absolute not. <laughs> okay, so you need to sample this first. This is a very earthy fragrance, but it smells extremely luxurious, high-end, and creamy smooth. The most dominant note that we're getting in here is the orris root. There's a non-gourmand vanilla that just really adds to the addictive factor of this perfume and that note in particular will creep up more the longer it sits on your skin and it also adds a bit of like a creamy white chocolate vibe to the overall scent the longer it's on your skin. We have an ultra smooth leather note. This does not smell deep dark or animalic in the slightest. And then we have several earthy aromatic notes. It smells quite woody to me as well. Like it's definitely giving off a pencil shaving vibe. This smells like a well-traveled, educated human being. It smells incredibly grounded, but at the same time, incredibly high fashion. Very unique, both for men and women. It really makes me feel a certain way. And after several wears, I, oh my gosh, I've just fallen head over heels for this. Um, initially, I was just, it was again, intrigue at first sniff. I was trying to figure out like, does this resonate with me? Does this feel like me? It's absolutely something that you are going to have to wear several times, revisit, just to try to understand the fragrance a bit more. This is truly a niche scent. So that wraps up my list of all the fragrances that I grew to love in my collection. And let me know, what scents did you grow to love? I'm very curious to know. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you wanna see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.